If you are watching this video, you have clicked on the help button for series. Uh, I'm going to go over example problem number six, which is at the end of the user's manual. Um, right here on the screen right now, it shows the problem statement for example problem number six. Um, and then here I'm going to show a table, which is a summary of the pertinent information for solving the problem. So we will be dealing with a single catchment. The site area is six acres. Uh, we're located in Orlando, Florida. Um, we're going to have a half acre exfiltration trench and a half acre reten retention basin, um, as well as some tree wells. And then we're going to be solving for net improvement. So again, net improvement is when our post-development conditions are less than or equal to our pre-development conditions. Um, right here in this table shows a summary of our pre- and post-development conditions. So, um, and then in this table down here, it shows that we're going to have 10 tree wells, and then it gives the, um, the, the specific data on those tree wells, which we'll need for uh, the model. So if I go to the model, uh, when you open the model, it'll take you to this page. Uh, you'll see help buttons for introduction, background, um, hydrograph generation. But we're going to go right into the program. So we're going to click this button at the top. Uh, it says click here to start. OK, so here we're at a general site information page. Um, whenever you use the model, the first thing you want to do is reset your input for the, the model, just in case there's some data that's in there that maybe wasn't reset previously. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, so now all of my data has been reset and I'm ready to start using the model. So the first thing you want to do is enter the project description or the name of your project. And in our instance, we're doing example problem six. Okay, next we want to uh, select our meteorological zone. So I'm going to go to the zone map so I can see which zone we're in. Okay, as I said before, this is Orlando, uh, Florida. So uh, you can see here we have the picture of the entire state of Florida. And you can see all of the um, clusters are, are color coded based upon uh, which, which zone you're in. Um, for ours, we're in Orlando. Um, so that's right here. And that puts us in zone two. So now I'll go back to the general site information uh, worksheet and insert that. Okay, if you click on the, on the cell, a little arrow will appear and that'll drop the, or, or show the drop down menu and then select zone two and click. The next thing we need to do is select our uh, mean annual rainfall. So to do that, we'll go view the mean annual rainfall map. And then here you can see, uh, uh, again, another uh, graphic of the state of Florida with, with a bunch of contour lines showing uh, the, the different rainfall uh, totals. Um, so we're going to zoom in here in the central region. Okay, so uh, here we are in Orlando here, and you can see the 50-inch uh, line goes pretty much right through it. So uh, we will select 50 inches um, for, or excuse me, I'm sorry, uh, we're actually in uh, about in between 50 and 51 inches. So um, in the example problem, we had selected 51. So we're going we're gonna to stay consistent with that, and we'll use 51 inches. So now we'll go back to the general site information worksheet. We'll insert 51 inches. Okay, next is uh, we need to select the type of analysis that we're going to do. Um, if, you, if you select the gray box, again, the little arrow will appear so you can show the drop down menu. Um, there's, there's three options to choose from, either net improvement, specified removal efficiency, or BMP analysis. For our problem, we're going to be doing a net improvement, which means our pre-development conditions will equal our post-development conditions. Um, 
the specified removal efficiency would be used if there was a certain treatment objective that you were trying to obtain, and the BMP analysis option would be used if you just wanted to analyze a BMP to see the effectiveness that you can get with that uh, system. So I'm going to select net improvement. Okay, and then since uh, this is a net improvement analysis, I do not need to enter um, removal efficiency numbers in these two boxes here. These are to show the nitrogen and phosphorus removal efficiency um, desired when you're trying to achieve a specified removal efficiency. Okay, so from here I'm going to proceed to the watershed characteristics worksheet so that I can insert the data for the watershed. All right, so the first thing you want to do is select your catchment configuration. So if I s select the view catchment configuration button, that will take me over to the uh, display, a graphical display of all of the, the catchment configuration options available. There are 14 different co uh, configurations that can be selected. If I scroll to the right, you can see some over here. Uh, if I, I can scroll down, um, there's some more. Scroll to the left. Um, so that shows you all of them. For this problem, though, we're going to be dealing with just a single catchment. So I'm just going to make note that I'm going to be choosing A, a single catchment. So now I'm going to proceed back to the watershed characteristics worksheet. Okay, and then in the watershed characteristics worksheet, if I select the gray box, the arrow appears. Um, I'll select that and then highlight A, single catchment. Okay, uh, next I, I'm, I need to select my pre and post uh, development land use conditions. So um, for this project, uh, we're dealing with um, undeveloped dry prairie. So I'll uh, open the drop down menu and, and scroll down to undeveloped dry prairie and select that. Uh, the, the next one is our post development land use conditions. And for that, we're going to be using low intensity commercial. So again, I'll show uh, the drop down menu and scroll down. And then low intensity commercial, I'll select that. Um, next, I need to insert the, the, the site characteristics. So um, we're dealing with a six acre catchment. Um, so our pre and, and post development catchment areas are, are six acres for both. Our pre development. Uh, Non-DCIA curve number is 79. Our pre-development DCIA percentage is zero. Our post-development non-DCIA curve number has increased to 85. Um, this is relatively common um, where you'll notice an increase in curve number from pre- and post-development conditions. And this is largely due to um, compaction that occurs during the construction process. And then next, I'll insert my post-development DCIA percentage. And that has been specified as 65%. And then lastly, I'm going to enter the estimated area of the BMPs that I'm going to use. Um, so for this, I'm going to do an estimate of, I have three BMPs that I'm using within this catchment. So I'm going to use the estimated area of all three BMPs. And that is one acre. Now, the, the reason that you insert your estimated area of your BMP is because the water management uh, districts have mandated that your BMP shall not contribute nitrogen and phosphorus loadings for the purposes of calculations. However, it will generate volume. Um, so it, this, this model handles that by allowing you to insert that uh, area of the BMP on, on this worksheet. Also to point out is that this, this worksheet shows you the pre and post development nitrogen and phosphorus mass loadings. Uh, those are over here. Um, however, if you wanted to use um, different values, if you had some data to support um, the use of, of different uh, event mean concentration values, um, you can simply come over here to show the drop down menu and then select the overwrite default concentrations option. Once you do that, then you would need to insert um, those values in, in these boxes up here, um, and, then, and then you can move forward. 
Um, whenever you use this option, you, you need to make sure that you have supporting documentation that will um, support the use of, of doing that. So now we have everything uh, that we need in our watershed characteristics worksheet. So I'm going to proceed to uh, select our BMPs for use. So we'll, go, we'll select the go to stormwater treatment analysis button. Okay. And then on this sheet, it, it shows us a, a picture of our catchment configuration. So again, we have a single catchment, which will be discharging. It shows us our required treatment efficiency for nitrogen and phosphorus based on the, the goals that we specified on the uh, inter, uh, general site information worksheet. And then it also shows buttons for all of the different BMPs that can be used, as well as a summary um, button, which will show us um, the, the results of our analysis. So we're going to start off um, going to the tree wells. So if you um, select the vegetated area example tree well button. Okay, so uh, when I come to this sheet, you can see that our problem description has been carried over. So example problem six. Um, we have four different catchments that we, can, that we can look at. However, since we've only defined one catchment, only one catchment has um, information populated here. So um, the next thing we want to know is uh, we'll start inputting the data here. So we have a, a vegetated area or, or a tree well depth. Uh, that was specified as, as three feet. Okay, and then next we want to know the water depth above the soil column. That was specified as half a foot or six inches. And this is all in feet, so I'm going to enter 0.5. Um, next, we want to know the length and the width of the uh, tree well box. Um, that's been specified as four feet for each, so it's a square box. And then we want to know the sustainable water storage capacity of the soil. Um, the model actually has uh, three different options that you can use, 0 0.16, 0 0.2, and 0.25. Um, for our particular problem, we're going to use a value of 0.2. Um, and then next we want to know how many similar areas are within the watershed or how many tree wells we're using for this, for this problem. So in this instance we're using 10 of them. So let's just insert 10. Okay. And then next is, is this a retention or is this a detention system? So for this problem this was specified to be a retention system. So I'm going to select retention here. And then I've inserted and then that's the that's, that's the last of the data that I need for this uh, BMP. You can see down here uh, it, it shows the efficiency, the treatment efficiency versus retention depth graph. Um, and from here you can see that we're getting very, very little treatment. And that's, and that's also shown up here. We're getting a little over 1%. Um, again, if you think about it, these tree wells are very small compared to the total size of the catchment, so it's not surprising that we don't get a, a higher efficiency here. Um, if you want a higher efficiency for this type of a BMP, you need to increase the number of uh, uh, tree wells that you have within your watershed. Also over here it shows a, a schematic of a, of a tree well. So it shows all the, 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 the different um, design sections for it. Okay, so we finished with the uh, tree well. So now I'm going to go back to the stormwater treatment analysis worksheet so that I can select the next BMP. Okay, so from here we're going to go to our exfiltration trench. So that was the next BMP that we used. So if we select the exfiltration trench button, Okay, so now I'm in the exfiltration trends worksheet. Um, again, just like the last one, we have four catchments that, that are available. However, since we've only filled the information in for one of them, the only catchment one will show up. So for here, um, this, also, uh, this is also a retention system. And uh, similar to the retention basin, this, this worksheet will show you how much uh, retention storage you need in order to meet the treatment objective. And so in this instance, it's 1.58 inches about. Um, there, there, there was no specification in the problem statement for how much we needed to do. So um, 
we'll just uh, use a, a little bit of an iterative approach to solve this problem. So um, we'll start off with, with saying that we'll treat a half inch um, in the exfiltration trench. So I'm going to insert 0.5. Now when I do that, it shows that with this half inch, we're getting about 54% um, provided treatment efficiency. You can also see uh, over here on the graph, it shows a half inch and then with about almost 55%, so about 54%. Um, so now we, we have everything in for the retention, uh, exfiltration trench. So now I'm going to go back to the stormwater treatment analysis so that we can input the data for the retention basin. Okay, so now I'm at the stormwater treatment analysis worksheet. From here, I'll select the retention basin button to proceed to the retention basin worksheet. Okay, so here in the retention basin worksheet, this looks very similar to the exfiltration trench worksheet, um, except obviously the schematic's different because we're dealing with a different BMP. However, all of the um, calculation cells look very, very similar. Um, so again, it shows us how much uh, retention depth we need in order to meet the treatment objective. Um, and again, it's, it's, it's 1.58 inches. So this sheet doesn't take into account what you've done on other worksheets. That's important to note. Um, that, is, that is taken into account on the summary worksheet, which we'll, which we'll get to in a moment. So again, we're going to solve this problem using an iterative approach. Um, we stored about a half inch on the last one uh, the, on the exfiltration trench worksheet and we also had 10 um, tree wells which gave us a little bit of uh, 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 treatment efficiency. Not quite what we need though. Um, so based on that I'm going to say let's try 0.9 inches um, for the retention basin and see what we get. Okay, so um, you can see here that that gets us uh, a little bit over 70%, and that also shows you here 72.38% um, for both nitrogen and phosphorus. Um, you get the same removal efficiency for both nitrogen and phosphorus with all retention systems, and this has to do with the fact that a retention system works um, by removing a volume of water. Assuming that all of the water generated within a catchment has a uniform concentration, if you remove 72% of the water, you're going to remove 72% of the mass of nitrogen and phosphorus. So we'll um, now uh, proceed to the uh, summary worksheet so that we can see the result of our analysis. So I'm going to go to the stormwater treatment analysis button. Okay, and then from here, we're going to go to the Catchment and Treatment Summary Results button. And then here it shows you a, a summary of everything that we've done in, in, in the whole uh, watershed. So again, we're dealing with a single catchment. Uh, we have three BMPs in, in this catchment. Now, whenever you have multiple BMPs within a single catchment, this model will always treat them as in series. So if they are not actually in series, what you'll need to do is break them apart and use multiple catchments um, and, then, and then pick the configuration from the configuration map on the watershed characteristics uh, worksheet. So on here you can see we have our, our three uh, BMPs, so they will be treated, as I said, in series, meaning the outflow of one flows in, is the inflow to the next. Um, down here it shows a summary of, of our um, design. So we had again a, a single catchment and shows a picture of it here. Shows a, the date that the model was run. Um, up here it shows us our, our nitrogen and phosphorus preload conditions, our post load conditions. Shows us our target um, removals. And then um, down here it shows us our provided overall efficiency. Um, as you can see, we have met our treatment objective for nitrogen. However, we did not meet our treatment objective for phosphorus. So that means we need to go back and do another iteration and see if we can increase that um, efficiency for phosphorus. So I'm going to go back to the stormwater treatment analysis worksheet by clicking on the button here. Okay, and then I will go back to the exfiltration trench let's add just a little bit of uh, storage here 
So instead of 0.5, let's go up to 0.57. So that increased us by a little bit. It went from 54 to a little over 57. Okay, so let's, uh, let's also increase our retention basin just a little bit. So let's go back to stormwater treatment analysis. And then let's select on our retention basin. Okay, and then here let's go from 0.9, inch, 0.9 inches to 1 inch. Okay, and then that has also increased our efficiency um, a little bit here as well. So now I'm going to go uh, back to the summary worksheet. So I'll click on the Go to Stormwater Treatment Analysis button. And then I'll click on Catchment and Treatment Summary Results button. Okay, and then if I scroll down, I can see I got my 87% for nitrogen and phosphorus, which meets my treatment objectives um, stated earlier. Additionally, this worksheet shows your discharge nitrogen and phosphorus load in both kilograms per year on the left and pounds per year on the right. And then it also shows the load removed for nitrogen and phosphorus with kilograms per year on the left and pounds per year on the right. All right.